Today's reading is from the book of Hebrews and chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. Let's read from the Word of God. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Amen. And we pray the Lord will bless his word. So let's pray together. Father, once again, we come to you and look to you, Lord, to help us at this time that you would take the things of God in Christ and make them known to us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, faith, we're told here, there is the subject. We're told three things. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The people of old were commended for their faith. And by faith, we understand the universe was created. Now, Charles Blondin was a French tightrope walker. And he was the first man ever to cross the Niagara Falls on a tightrope. Of course, he was a showman, and one of his daring feats was to push a wheelbarrow across the wire. He asked the crowd, do you think I can do this? The crowd had no problem in believing he would. Oh, yes. Blondin then said, well, get in the barrow. And of course, he had no takers. No one would take the step of faith. Believing was one thing. Believing and getting in the barrow was a little different. Now, true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is getting in the battle, so to speak. True faith is believing in Jesus as the only Savior for sinners, the only way to the Father. But true faith is believing that only through the blood of Jesus our sins are cleansed and forgiven. These spectators had a belief that did not quite reach the assurance of what they claimed. They believed, but were not convinced. They did not have the assurance or the conviction to get in the battle. Now, faith, strangely enough, is exercised by us every day in many ways. We sit on a chair believing it will hold our weight. We, because we live in a privileged society, we have electricity. We switch on the light, believing it will brighten the room. We have water. We turn on the tap, believing we will get water. We post a letter, believing it will be delivered. We board buses and trains, believing we will get to our destination. Well, friends, an eternal destination there are two. The Bible teaches that are heaven and there is hell. Now, the only sure way of getting to heaven is truly trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. People exercise faith in many ways for uh, their eternal salvation. They think they may be good enough. They have faith in themselves. They have faith in the fact that they pray. They may have faith in the fact that they do good things, that they sometimes go to church or are very religious in attending church. But friends, none of these things will ultimately get you to heaven. Only Jesus Christ can take us to heaven. The Hebrews being addressed here were persecuted. And regarding their faith in Jesus, it seems that was the root of the persecution. And it seems some may have been in the battle, so to speak, and some may not have quite stepped into the battle. And it seems that they may have been tempted to go back to the religion they were familiar with, the Jewish religion, Judaism. That is the temple worship with its ritual ceremonies and sacrifices. These were things that could be seen, they were tangible. But of course, the temple its ceremonies and sacrifices were pointing to the things that were hoped for, the things they pointed to were, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. 
Jesus died for sinners and rose again. He's exalted in glory. And we, like the ancient people of old, we look to him by faith. They were commended for their faith. Because, friends, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Only faith will God honor. You know, faith they had in God's word, in his promises. They looked beyond the rituals and ceremonies, which, although tangible, were only shadows of our reality, God's Christ, God's Messiah, God's Son. And whatever position uh, one takes on origins, it's ultimately a faith one. As Christians, we understand the heavens, the earth, the universe was created by the word of God. We're told that all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. Nothing was made without him. In him was life. And the light was the light of men. There is life only in Jesus. And we're told in Colossians, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. All things were created by him and hold together in Jesus, our faith and our salvation. Will you trust his love today? We have the assurance that he who believes is not condemned. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, Lord, you would bless it to us. As we continue this day, may we have all our hope and confidence in you for eternity and for all the things of our daily experience. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.